wondering how you can become better at running your business? Entrepreneurship can be stressful. There's too much to do and not enough time. If you're isolated in your daily decisions, have no fear. Success and balance are possible. Welcome to the Small Business Answer Man podcast, where you master the art of running a successful business using practical advice from experts who want to help you succeed. Now, here's your host, Gary Wilbers. Welcome. We're glad to have you back again for a great podcast. It's hard to believe we're in that fourth quarter, but with the Small Business Answer Man podcast, we try to help entrepreneurs and business owners find solutions so they don't become overwhelmed and stressed. Are you ready to hear about one of those areas of the 6P business owner formula? We talk about people, productivity, pricing, promotion, processes, and profits. Let's meet our guest today, Miriam, who's going to share with us a problem she will help us solve. Well, hey there. I love your alliteration. Thank you so much for having me. I thought we should dive into the big P on pricing. How about that? Does that sound like a good plan to you, Gary? I love it. Thank you. I'm looking forward to this conversation as Miriam Schumann is with us and she's an artist, a founder, and the inspiration place where she helps other artists learn how to profit from their passion or become better artists. She's helped thousands of artists around the world develop their skill sets and create more time and freedom to do what they love. Mary, it is great to have you on the podcast. Welcome. Well, thanks for having me. It's so fun to be here. Well, I think it's great to talk about it because artists are creatives. And really, let's be honest, business owners and entrepreneurs, they need to be creatives, especially this day and age of what's required in the business world. It's not easy at all. But I think sometimes our business owners get stuck. And today we're going to try to get them to think a little bit differently. And like you said, in that pricing area. But let's start off with maybe how can they really kind of get in sync, you think, with the future of marketing? Because it seems like it keeps changing on them and everybody thinks they need to be in social media. Well, I want to get your feedback on what you think we should be doing. I love this question, Gary, and I'm so glad we're starting off right here. So when I submitted the first draft of my book, Artpreneur, with which I published with HarperCollins, they had gave me back notes uh, saying like, oh, she's old fashioned. She's in her 50s. She doesn't believe in social media. I don't get it. And I took that as an invitation, Gary, not to say, oh, wait, I'll give you social media stuff too. I was like, no, I didn't build my case strong enough about why social media is not the way to go and email marketing is better. So Gary, do you mind if I share some like really interesting data oh, with I our think listeners? Be very beneficial, please. Okay. So when I started writing the book two years ago, the average Instagram engagement was 1%. That means out of a thousand people, one person is going to engage with what you post. Now, for those of you who have small Instagram followings, that engagement is probably higher because it's all the people you know. Mm -hmm. But for most people, on that is what the average is. Now, by the time I went to edit my book last year in 2022, I looked at what the research was showing. And the average Instagram engagement rate, and this is in 2022, we're in the fourth quarter of 2023 now. So we, we know it's changed. But last year, it had dropped to 0.6%. Wow. That is like half a percent. We know it's only gone down. But what about... All of those people who want to tell you how to get your engagement rate up, you know, all these gurus and all these influencers, do you, do you want to guess what their engagement rate is? Mm, probably not much better. No, 1.12%. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about, now we know it's a lot less than it was last year, but let's even use 0.6. Let's even start with that. Like, what does that mean? Okay. So that means that, uh, I think I said something wrong back there also. It's 1% is out of 1,000 people, 10 people are going to engage. That's 1% is going to engage with your stuff. If you have a 0.6 engagement rate, 0.6%, that means out of 1,000 people, only six people. Now, the average open rate on email 
is 24%. Would you agree with that? Yes. On average, right? So let's make this equal. That means you would need 4,000 people on Instagram to get the same result as only 100 people on email. So Big which difference. is easier as a small business owner? Where the small business, you're the small business podcast. Is it easier to find 4,000 people or 100 people? Well, that becomes key. Plus, you own the 100 people. The 4,000, yeah. you don't own the platform. If they change and decide to cut you off, you lose everything. Yeah. And it's not just the algorithm. So when I started promoting my book, Artpreneur, I thought that I would do Instagram lives. Well, Gary, right before you go live on Instagram, it tells you, have you seen this? How it tells you how many people, how many of your followers are actually on the platform? Yeah. Have you noticed how that's been dropping? Yes. Okay, so I have roughly 27,000 followers on Instagram. Back in January, when I was promoting my book, the most I ever had was 65 people who not were tuning in live, but were on the platform. Okay, you want to know what that's dropped to now, now that we're in the fourth quarter of 2023? Do you, do you, have, do you have any idea? Uh, probably less than half that. Not even. Um, 15 people in the middle of the day. It's not like I'm talking about like two in the morning, like in the middle of the day, high time. I think it was, it dropped tremendously after Instagram released threads. So it's not just a question of algorithms. People just aren't on these platforms in the same way they used to be. Yeah. And that becomes huge. And I, I always believe that you have to own your database and you, you can be on some of those platforms, but you want to be able to direct connect with them. And people want to say emails dead. We both know it's not, especially when you're targeting the people that want your products, your services, and what you're selling. I mean, it doesn't matter if what business you're in, you should own your database and have some sort of database available to them. That's right. So that you call it pe people. That's your, your P is people. Yeah. My P is prospecting, but yes. Yes, yeah, exactly. Well, let's talk a little bit about how we can take that customer now. And in your area, you kind of talk about romance, your customer to deepen that commitment for your, for your product, your service, or for your love and stuff of that new purchase. What's some research? I know you've got done some research on this. Can you share some of that information? Yeah. So th this will definitely apply to small business owners and, and definitely applies to the artists I work with is that they, they always, they approach things a little bit backwards. You know, that the creepy guy, when you go into a networking meeting and they're giving their business card to everybody. And right. I know so many artists who think they had a good art show because they handed out a lot of cards. Okay. This is basically the equivalent of if I went into a singles bar and started passing out my phone number, do you think I'd get a, a lot of dates that way? It's just desperate. And the thing is, is you, they have it backwards. You're supposed to be getting their contact information. So that's why I call it romancing your buyers is you got to think of it in that way. We are the lion and they are the prey. The lion chases the prey, not <laughs> the other way around. Good analogy. So in terms of being a small business owner, and this is true, whether you own a brick and mortar store or you're an artist like me, or you are um, a dietitian, or whatever it is, your goal is always going to be to connect with people, get their information and stay in touch. And the most reliable way of staying in touch, which we've already discussed is with emails. Excellent. I love that because it becomes so important that you are gathering that information. I had the same thing Mary, I used to have wireless stores and my sales reps would always tell me when they give them their business card, you know, I think they're going to be back. And then I'd go out in the parking lot and I'd pick up their cards. <laughs> right. That's what I talk about in Artpreneur is that basically people are asking for your card as a polite way to get away from you. Mm -hmm. 
And if they ask for your card, that is your cue to say, hey, let me take down your name and I'll send you whatever it is that is your your freebie or the best thing that you're going to be able to offer them that you can send them through email. Yeah, that's great information. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back with the Small Business Answer Man podcast. And now back to the show. Well, that's some great information because we have to really get connected with our customers. But then once we get connected, we're able to send them offers and really be able to talk to them. The one thing that always comes in really, and I know you kind of frame it up as charm pricing first. So if you would share with the audience what that is, because some of them are wondering, but we talked about, we were going to talk about pricing some. And how does that differ from kind of that prestige pricing and how do you use those to really make that be effective for uh, your business? I love that you asked me this question, Gary. So this is something that I talk about in the book, An Artpreneur, and is the difference between charm pricing and prestige pricing. These aren't terms that I've made up. These are like economic terms. So charm pricing is something a lot of business owners are aware of, and unfortunately, they don't know when to use it and when not to use it. So charm pricing is when you go to Walmart and you can get a five pack of underwear for $14.97. They're pricing everything down to the penny because they're there for the Walmart customer. They want you to know that they're counting every penny and it's also priced below a threshold. So uh, an online course might be 497 because you're going to think of it in the 400s instead of 500. That's great for some instances, but you are going to attract people who are penny pincher, pinchers and watching every dollar and numbers that end in a nine of uh, that nine or seven is going to be processed by the logical side of our brains. Okay, so let's contrast that with prestige pricing. You're with me so far, Gary? Okay, so prestige pricing is when we round it. So we've they've done research where they price champagne at $39, $40, and I forget what the third price was, maybe $41. And they found that the rounded number, the $40 champagne sold better than the $39. Why? Because those rounded numbers are processed by the emotional side of your brain. So mm. if you are selling something that has an emotional component to it, like my art, like of luxury item, like champagne, you're going to want to use rounded numbers because you don't want them using the logical side of their brain when they're making a purchasing decision. You'll also notice that on places like if you go onto the Rolex website, they're never going to say the watch is $5,997. So you'll see everything is rounded. And for them, it's rounded to the hundreds place. So it would be 4,800. So you can kind of combine things like instead of pricing something at 5,000 and you want it perceived a little bit below that threshold, you, they would price it at 4,800, but it's rounded. I love that. And I've not heard that before. And that really makes a lot of sense because you're going after a different target, a different market. So it's knowing your customer, which every business owner, I hope knows who that is. And it really lets you set up that you don't have to be that price conscious, because I think that's the challenge today. Everybody thinks they have to be the lowest price. And yeah, there are yeah. people after that, but you and I both know that that's not the market. There's people that want the better. You know, I always joke because it shows my age. I'll talk about the Yugo. And of course, young people don't even know what that car was. But, you know, that's because it's not around anymore. But there's people that buy all the time the Cadillacs or whatever style of vehicle that you want to see because it gives them that prestige. So um, great philosophy there. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Also, and, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to see if really I thought maybe this may be a good place to really kind of talk a little bit about that 
passion to profit, you have a framework that you've created and you shared in your book and in the information on basically to turn your passion really into kind of that money generating um, business machine. And really for all business owners, a lot of times they got into their business because they're very good at whatever they're doing. Um, so I'm curious to hear a little bit about your passion for profit framework. Yeah. So my book, Artpreneur, it is targeted at creatives, but really the principles that work for art work for all businesses. So what I'm really teaching is general business principles and showing artists, hey, this works for you too. And here's why. And here's the evidence. And by artists, I'm not just talking about visual artists. In the book, it's for any kind of creative. But once you say any kind of creative, just like you said at the beginning of the show, Gary, all entrepreneurs are creating. We're all yeah. creating something from our imaginations, from our mind that didn't exist before. That's the beauty of it. So here's what the passion to profit framework looks like. So you have your production. Every business on the planet is producing something, whether it's goods or services. And looking at what is your producing, does that make sense? Can you make a business out of it. So there are some definitely some losing business ideas. <laughs> so for example, uh, the one I gave an entrepreneur is the hand painted rock. People will say to me, Miriam, I don't understand um, I how to get more people in front of this because they don't see it as real art. And I'm like, yeah, that's your problem. So, or somebody who's doing a handmade greeting card, there's a limit to how much you can price certain things. So sometimes the easiest thing that people need to do is to look at what they're producing and maybe either packaging it differently or altering exactly what it is that they're offering so that it has a higher perceived value. The next thing is pricing. These things work hand in hand, but I'm always surprised how many people don't do the math. If you were, if you're a service-based provider, if you're fully booked with your prices, does that give you the income you're looking for? If you are e-commerce or you have a physical product, if you were sold out based on your capacity, so production is more like your capacity to produce and pricing is what you're pricing it at. Do those, you know, this times this, does that equal the income? So look at that first. Sometimes you need to change what you're producing. Sometimes you just need to raise your prices. Often you need to do both. Because like I said before, cheaper is not easier to sell. They also did studies on wine where they showed that the, the wine that was labeled as being priced higher, that in a blind taste test studies that people rated those wines higher even though it was like the same wine. It was that they were perceiving it as tasting better because they were told it was more expensive. We see this in so many industries. You mentioned the car. This is something that's known as like a Veblen good from Thomas Veblen for the economist. Something like a, an electronic car is going to have a high price tag and people enjoy spending money on something that is exclusive. It gives them that kind of um, dopamine. And, and women have that with handbags, like the, the Birkin bag, not everyone can have it. And the fact that it's expensive and there's this high barrier to entry makes it more attractive. So yeah, it's, cheaper is think, not easier to sell. Yeah, and I think that's so important what you've talked about with charm and prestige pricing is really knowing where should you be in your marketplace? And maybe right. this is one of the switches that you should make in your business. So I want business owners to think about, you know, you don't have to do it overnight, but maybe you make that switch to become prestige pricing because, you know, some people are having trouble hiring employees now. So don't be the low dollar one and go for volume. Instead, go for volume of dollars that comes in and yeah. can really show a different level of service for a company. I mean, everyone is always has their antennas up for the negative news. And I don't know for how many months we were hearing the recession's coming, the recession's coming. And suddenly we're hearing, oh, the recession never came. You know, it was like the eggs, eggs are priced higher. Yeah. So like groceries are cost higher, but unemployment is really, really low. And what I like to tell my artists and I, what I want to share to business people, if somebody doesn't have a lot of money to spend and they just 
moved into a new home or new apartment, no furniture. What are they most likely to buy, Gary? A $4,000 couch or a $400 end table? Don't buy that couch. The couch. The couch. Same thing with the artwork. Are they more likely to buy a $2,000 artwork that hangs over the couch or a small little painting for $400 that maybe goes in their bathroom? Again, they're more likely to buy the $2,000 painting. Yes. So over and over again, we show that cheaper isn't easier to sell and these big items are more desirable. Yeah, it becomes huge and it becomes really the, the fact of really changing for some business owners, it's changing their own mindset. Bingo. Yeah, I think that becomes so huge that they really think about it. Well, we're coming up on that time, such great information. And I always hate it because when I get a guest on, but I want to make sure you've mentioned it a couple of times. I've got my copy here and it's a great read and some great information in there. But why don't you share what you believe? And you kind of shared a little bit about it, but why you wrote the book and what are people going to get out of it? Because it really fits anyone because we're all business owners. You better be a creative in business today. Otherwise, to be quite honest, you're not going to be in business very long at all. So what could the business owners get out of reading your book? That's a great question. So just, and it was a perfect segue too. So sometimes I like to call this a self-development book in disguise as a business book for artists. And the very first chapter is called Choose to Believe. And your listeners can get that absolutely free if they go to Shulman Art and Shulman is S-C-H, shulmanart.com forward slash believe. Or if you're one of the 15 people who are on Instagram right now, you can DM me the word believe at Shulman Art and my robot will send it to you. Super. I appreciate you sharing that with them and give them the first chapter. So if they want to try it out, they can. If not, I'm sure it's on all the book places that you can buy a book. We'll have it in show notes so you can easily um, be able to reach that information. And before I let you go, I want to ask you one last question. I ask every guest is what's your best business advice or tip that you would give for our business owners? Sure. Okay. So I would say that sometimes, and since we were talking about mindset, you're doing all the things, you're taking action. And this is how I ended Artpreneur. And that chapter 12 is called Keep Marching Forward. Keep taking action, one step in front of the other, not marching in place and not blaming our boots. It's not the circumstance. It's not the earthquake in Turkey. Just keep taking inspired action one foot in front of the other, and you will make forward progress. Well, can't thank you enough for sharing all your knowledge and your experience. And what a great book for business owners. I would tell you, get it. It'll make you think differently. Um, that's what it did for me. I'm a creative. Yes, I sell a lot online, but I sell coaching services that I don't have to be the cheapest coaching service out there. People want my prestige pricing. And I've made that switch over this last year and your book really confirmed it to me. So I can't thank you enough for that, Miriam. And remember her website is on there at shulmanart.com. We'll have that in show notes so you can easily click on it, be able to check that out um, and check all of her information out. Miriam, I can't thank you enough for joining us today. Thanks for being with us. Well, thanks for having me, Gary. I want to leave you with this. I really appreciate you joining the podcast today, but you know, this is all the time we have today, but the thing is you now need to go out each day and continue to grow your business. Remember, don't ascend to the top of the mountain by yourself. When you're, when you, when you help others, you achieve success. You find that significance that you want. What I try to do is share you different expertise on this podcast. So it gets you to think, as a business owner, now you've got to decide to take action. So I hope you take action. Remember, share this podcast, like it, let others know about it. That's how we keep growing. Thanks for joining us on the Small Business Answer Man podcast. Make it a great day. We'll see you next time. That's all the time we have for this week. To continue your journey, head over to smallbusinessanswerman.biz to access the tools and resources mentioned in today's show. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share it with someone who would benefit from listening at smallbusinessanswerman.biz. Until next time, remember, 
When you find the right solutions, your business grows and you get your time back.